Welcome. I am Mrs. Lebitz. I am school counselor L through Z. Mrs. Fatal is with me as well. And we are here to present the scheduling process for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, we have a presentation that will list the process of how to go about scheduling, how to know what to schedule, um, and some information to reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns. This slide will be available to you um, and it'll have our contact information as well as our cell phone and email addresses. So the timeline we are looking at for scheduling will unfold in February and March. We're going to give vir uh, virtual presentations to the classes. Some will be within a particular subject area. Mostly ninth graders will either probably be jumping into physics or um, history to present to you the process. For the upperclassmen, we look to hold uh, Google Meets on Wednesdays to present to you the process and to answer any questions. We also will have office hours available to help with one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions or are unsure what you should be selecting. We will have that information um, advertised and shared so you know to when to meet with Mrs. Fatal and myself if you want a little one-on-one -on -one assistance with the scheduling process. Um, we encourage you to take this time over the next few weeks to discuss with your current teachers the appropriate course levels. Should I be in college prep? Should I be in honors? Should I be in AP? Um, and the teachers that you work with this year, although in a definitely unique situation, will be able to guide you and make sure you're appropriately choosing the right level courses. As I mentioned, we're going to look at this through February and March. February, we're going to use to get the information out to you to explain the process, um, to show you the steps to answer any questions. The schedule, the Sapphire schedule, will be available to you March 1st on your student por portal. Um, your parents will not have access to it. They will have to log on or jump on with you if they want to help with the process. It'll be, again, under your student portal um, in Sapphire. In the month of March, we're going to assist you with the process. So uh, very, later on in the slide presentation is a step-by-step -step process on how to select courses within the Sapphire portal. That we will go through with you again in March. February, we're just getting this video out to you and kind of giving you a guideline of when everything's going to lay out. Um, in March is when you're going to select and solidify your classes. Mrs. Fatal is going to now go over just a reminder of how many um, units of everything you need for graduation. And this is information that you will also find on your transcript, which can be found um, in your student portal, typically on the left hand side of your Sapphire portal. If you scroll down a little bit, you see the word transcript and that lists all the courses you have completed. It will not include the courses that you're currently in. Um, but you can see all your previous year's classes and then combine them with what you're selected for this year. Mrs. Fatal, did, would you like to go over this? I will. So we need 23 credits to graduate from the Chambersburg Area School District. Um, unless you are a career tech student, in which case you would only need 22. Um, so basically you need four credits of English. Um, if you are not a career tech student, you would need four credits of math, okay? If you're a career tech student, you would do three credits of math. And if you have any questions about that, just see Mrs. Lovitz or I, and we can talk with you about it. Um, you will need three credits of science before you graduate, three and a half units of social studies, a credit and a half of fitness and health. So basically that's two half credits of your gym. And that would be a half credit of health. If you are an athlete and you have played a sport in 10th or 11th grade, you can do a PIAA waiver, which would waive one of the gym requirements. And so those are things we can talk to you about um, individually, but that is something to consider. Uh, also, you need six and a half elective credits. Keep in mind that if you take more sciences than you need, so for example, um, if you did like four units of science instead of th just three, that extra uh, science would actually count as an elective. And of course, anything you're taking such as digital art, robotics, um, STEM exploratory, all of those things count as your elective credits. If you're in the shop, your shop is elective credits. So each time that you complete a, a semester of shop that earns you two and a half electives. So many of our shop students actually earn most of their electives by doing shop. So um, the last thing that you would need is a half credit of ICT totaling 23 credits or 22 if you're a career tech. 
Uh, some things to consider when you're choosing your course selections. What are your future college and career goals? So if you're a student who plans to enter a trade uh, or you're a shop student and you plan to go straight into the workforce, um, your goals are gonna look different than someone whose ambition is to go to college. So even though you only need four credits of math or three, depending on whether you're a career tech student, if you um, are planning to go to college, you're, you may wanna go beyond what we require in high school. You may wanna take extra core classes. You wanna consider those AP level courses or honors level courses to make sure you're prepared for college. Those are the things colleges wanna see. Um, what knowledge do I need to have uh, to set yourself up for whatever it is you're going to? Um, if it's technical school or trade school or the military, you're gonna wanna make sure you're having experiences and taking classes that prepare you for those areas. And if you're not sure, ask Mrs. Levitz and I, uh, or Ms. Bauer, our college advisor. One of the things you wanna be aware of is do you wanna be an athlete in college? Uh, in the NCAA has eligibility requirements. We have that provided in our course catalog, which we're gonna share a link with you. Um, but you do want to make sure that you are following those eligibility requirements. Um, and sometimes it changes slightly from year to year. So you want to make sure you're looking on, on the website for the NCAA Eligibility Center. And, and you'll be able to discover there's certain classes you need to take to be prepared to be an NCAA athlete. So you want to make sure you're doing the things you need to do. And we can help you if you need it. Um, what responsibilities do I have in addition to my academic classes? You know, sometimes students take a fuller load than possibly they can handle. Maybe you work outside of school. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a balanced schedule and we can help you with that as well, um, if you're not sure. And what classes or content areas do I enjoy the most? And I often say, if you wanna challenge yourself, um, but maybe you're not sure where to start, if history is something you really enjoy or you find that you're really good at, Maybe you try to take that AP history course and get, get some information, um, you know, to challenge yourself in an area where you find that you're already show, seeing some success in the regular classes. So make sure, you know, but if you know, if, if for example, you're not good in math and maybe you don't want to challenge yourself in that area. So you just have to know yourself uh, and challenge yourself where you can. Um, so CMS is on a block schedule. Um, and so this is kind of what that looks like and what that means. So for our current ninth graders, uh, you've been on a partial block schedule and that's gonna change as you go into 10th grade, uh, moving into 12th. Most of your courses will be on a block like your English nine was this year. So this is kind of a sample uh, schedule that you might have say next year or in 11th grade. Uh, your English would take up two periods because it is a block class, meaning it's only half of the year. Um, some of our AP classes, like AP US History, they run full year. So that would take up one full period for the entire year. Um, we also offer a German class that's the same way. So we have a couple of those classes that are slightly different. Um, you see KC there, that stands for Knowledge Commons. That might be a study hall that you would take. Uh, some of your electives that are half credits would just take one period for one half a year, such as human biotech or gym. Um, and then like honors bio, that would be a, a block. So that would be two full periods for half a year. And then you can see at the semester two change, you would switch over and you do a different set of block courses, keep the same AP US history class because it's full year and then maybe start some new electives. Um, so that's kind of, you can take, we have eight periods, so you could take potentially eight credits, depending on if you have a full schedule or not. So when you're selecting courses, you just want to keep in mind, like this is kind of what I suggest is writing out like semester one, semester two, eight periods, and kind of plan out what you want to take and you can kind of lay it out and see what it looks like. It may not fall in that order and what you're, you're picking you know, in terms of the way the schedule works, but that just gives you an idea of um, kind of how to select the classes and how many spots you have available. All right, so ninth graders, when you get ready to schedule, some things you want to think about is definitely making sure you're taking an English, math, social studies, science. I know that ninth grade is when we predominantly have a lot of students apply for shop. We won't know who gets in the shop in which semester until into March, maybe April sometime. Um, so you can't anticipate that you're getting a shop. So you will need to schedule as if you're gonna be a CMS student all year, selecting an English, math, social studies, and science. 
should you get into shop, we'll remove some of your electives, maybe even remove a core class, depending on what um, all you've chosen, to fit half a year in shop and half the year with your academics. Something else you want to keep in mind is, have you taken both of your physically active gym classes? Or are you anticipating being a high school athlete this coming 10th grade year, in which case you wouldn't need the second um, physically active gym class? Have you taken health? Maybe that's something you want to do and just kind of check that graduation box off as opposed to pushing it off another year. And same with ICT, which we call speech as well. Have you taken that graduation requirement? Um, if not, do you feel like you're okay or ready to take it next year so that, again, that graduation requirement is checked off? As I referenced, if you're in shop, we're going to get ready to do that process through the mid-February, but you won't know if you've gotten selected until March, early April. So you just can't anticipate that that's going to happen. Select electives and then select the alternates. So when we get into scheduling, you're going to see where you'll click on the boxes when you want to select classes. You'll see another column that says alternates. So that's where you want to list um, the additional electives, or say um, if you didn't get human biotechnology or human anatomy and you want honors chem, maybe human anatomy is your first choice and Honors Chem is your alternate. So make sure you give us enough alternates so that when we um, are rolling the schedule over um, come the end of the year and there's conflicts, we don't necessarily have to try and um, get a hold of you as you're out on vacation. We can take your alternates to fill in those spaces. Um, tenth graders, something you wanna consider, you're now getting ready to approach 11th grade you can conceivably graduate in 11th grade. So is this something you wanna do? Um, and it could be for a multitude of reasons. We have students wanna graduate early because they wanna get a, a year start on college. Um, we have some graduate early because they're getting ready to move and they know they just wanna graduate with CMS. Whatever your reason may be, if graduating in your junior year is something of interest to you, there is a form that needs to be completed. We are going to have um, and reference a lot of forms throughout the presentation. That information will be on our uh, CMS counseling Google Classroom, and we'll send that, in, that link out as well with the um, course selection guide and everything else you could need. That will be uh, shared with you. So if you need these forms that we reference, it will be in our counseling Google Classroom, or you can always just email Mrs. Fatal and myself, which we referenced at the beginning of the presentation. Um, but if you want to graduate next year in your 11th grade year, you definitely need to communicate that with Mrs. Fatal and myself so we can make sure that you're on track to be done. Um, and I will tell you, if you're a shop student, that's not usually something that can happen. Um, that's usually for the CMS students because uh, you lose half a year with shop. Um, and so you can't quite get all your core classes done by next year. Um, if you're interested in culinary hospitality field, we do have a great relationship with um, Orchard's Restaurant, um, and he runs this thing called the Costa Academy, and you get to learn about the cooking, the managing of a hotel uh, business, hospitality business, and catering business. So definitely um, a really great opportunity if that's something of interest to you. Uh, it does take a little bit time of your day, um, usually in the morning, and you come back to CMS in the afternoon and take additional classes. If that's something of interest to you, there is a form that needs to be filled out as well for that. Um, we've referenced this a couple times, but if you play a high school sport in 10th grade, you can be exempt in 11th grade from that last physically active gym class. Um, so if you want, you do need to access our Google Classroom and uh, get yourself a copy of that PIAA waiver or reach out to Mrs. Fatal or myself. Are you interested in taking early to college classes? Um, we have students, Mrs. Fatal and myself, both have students that in 11th grade and 12th grade are not in CMS at all or only in CMS a little bit because they're taking early to college classes at one of our local institutions. Um, Penn State, Mont Alto, Shippensburg, Wilson College, they are all coming in February 24th to have presentations. Um, that information has definitely been shared with the students. I encourage you to drop by the Zoom meetings and learn a little bit more about the early to college opportunities. It's a great chance to take college credit for AP weight, get a jump start on that college career um, at a 
really fantastic price. Um, there is no financial aid available, so let me make sure I preface that, that if you're interested in early to college courses, it is definitely a really great opportunity at a reduced rate, but there's no financial aid. So you do have to kind of make sure that that's something um, fiscally uh, feasible for you and your family. And you're not also limited to ship Mon Alto and Wilson. Um, you can take early college classes at any institution. Those are just the local ones that we tend to have our students go to. But I've had students reach out as far as Elizabethtown or Liberty College um, University. So if there's another school of interest to you, just communicate with Mrs. Fatal and myself, and we make sure that you are taking classes that still meet our graduation requirements as you're embarking on that college career um, at an early age. So as I mentioned, all these forms are in our Google Classroom and Mrs. Fatal and myself have a copy of that. So we can certainly see that you get that as well. But in this virtual world, we're really gonna have to make sure we're um, communicating back and forth. It's even harder to read your minds um, when we don't get to see you in person. So any questions ask, we have cell phones. Um, you can call our cell phones, you can email us. Um, we wanna make sure that we are working together through the scheduling process and making sure your needs are being met. The current 11th graders, some things to consider. We inevitably every year have a few students who want to graduate early. Perhaps they want to go to boot camp for the military and they want to leave, you know, get a jump start, or, you know, maybe they're not interested in necessarily participating in graduation in May, but they want to end, you know, early and just be done. And so if you do wish to graduate early, there is a process, as Mrs. Levitz referenced before, um, for you to, to be approved to be an early graduate. There's paperwork and things. That will be in our Google Classroom, and, and you can reach out if you have some questions about that. But that is an option if that's something you'd like to discuss. Same thing about, we've, we've hit this several times about being exempt from your last gym class. You can check with us or get the PIAA waiver if that's something you wanna do. Um, again, early to college classes, I would say, Primarily, a lot of our seniors are looking into doing that. Be aware that Mrs. Cunningham does have a hack English class that's actually taught at CMS where you can still earn a college credit if you're not, maybe you don't have the transportation or the ability to, to go to one of our local institutions, but you'd like to earn the college English credit through Mrs. Cunningham's course, you can do that. So that's something you could take rather than just regular English 12. But if you're wishing to do the full dual enrollment experience, um, want to check out those um, presentations February 24th um, and there will be signups for dual enrollment coming up you know you're probably going to need to sign up before about April or May uh, to, if you want to do it in the fall so that's something that's it's kind of upon us so it's time to start moving in that direction if that's what you want to do and, and we're available with any questions and the uh, admissions representatives at the different institutions are super helpful um, and can answer a lot of questions and they want they want you and your business. So they're gonna be available to you. So that's gonna be something that um, you, you know, you wanna be reaching out to them. And keep in mind too, when it comes to the early to college classes, one thing that students don't often realize is that, you know, I went over those graduation requirements we talked about earlier. If you wish to take a college English or you and you still need an English credit, as most of you will, or if you need like a half credit of social studies or a full credit of social studies, you could take a psychology, a sociology or a history course through one of the local institutions. And we're gonna count it for you as that graduation requirement if it's through one of our approved providers, um, as well as it's going to be a college credit for you. So keep that in mind. Um, and, and with questions about that, please just reach out and, and we can help you navigate that. Do you wish to apply for senior privilege? That's a form that you actually have to fill out. It's just not an automatic thing. You have to get your parent to sign um, and you have to have room in your schedule for that. Um, part of having senior privileges, you have to ensure that you're keeping your grades up. So if you are failing courses you're in, you, we, we have to pull you from senior privilege until you kind of get back on track. But in order to start thinking about whether you want it next year, uh, there's a form that you have to fill out you have to turn into us so we can make sure we put it in your schedule. Otherwise, if you didn't choose enough classes, you go into study halls. So to get senior privilege, we have to have the form. Um, do you wish to participate in any of the co-op opportunities that we have? Um, we have Costa Academy, um, as Mrs. Lovett's already mentioned, if you have a culinary interest. We also have a 
now, which is really cool and exciting, um, a partnership with JLG. When I was at Cassius, um, Cassius had started a partnership with JLG where students could do a co-op there. They could uh, work there and actually get paid as a student, um, learning trades such as welding, um, machining, fabrication, that kind of thing. And if they do a good job, those students are often hired upon graduation. And JLG actually has college tuition reimbursement for students who wish to stay at JLG um, and then also further their education. So this is now going to be an opportunity for CMS students. I did send out a link about that, um, a Google link that you can fill out if you're interested. Please, please fill that out. We don't have other details at this moment in time, but you would just be aware you would need to have room in your schedule to work for a few hours a day. Um, and you, you need to fill out the interest form if it's something you're interested in. And as more details become available, we will be in contact with you. Um, and if you have any other, you know, things that you're wanting to do, like a co-op. So some of our students that are not career tech students actually will do co-ops um, out in, in different, um, you know, different businesses. Some, some people have gone to law offices. Some people have gone to, you know, somewhere in the medical field. Um, so if you are interested in a co-op opportunity, there's paperwork for that. There's a process for that. So just see us for those special circumstances and we'll help you with that. Um, for everybody, just things that we want you to consider. Um, basically, all of these forms that we have referenced, where, whether it be the PIAA waiver, whether it be um, the Costa Academy application, all of these forms that we've talked about are going to be in our Google Classroom and we'll be providing that link to you. Um, also, if you don't find what you're looking for, if you have a specific question, just email us and we'll help you out. Um, anybody is interested in participating in your book, there is a yearbook application. Again, it'll be in the classroom and you do have to do the application to participate. Um, and again, we will be holding scheduling drop-in sessions to assist with you with this process. You're not alone in this. Uh, ideally, we'd be in the building with you working through these things, but since we're not, we're, just know that we're an email away or a call away, depending on, you know, if it's something <laughs> we need to answer by phone. All right, so the next several slides are just pictures to guide you through. Again, this is going to be available for you to reference later on, but the process of selecting classes will open up March 1st for you. Um, I encourage you to sit down with your parent or guardian. Um, we will be in your classroom setting going through the process with you, but you certainly can jump on as soon as it's opened and start selecting classes. Um, whether you select classes March 1st or March 22nd, doesn't give you a leg up on the competition of getting that course. Um, the really great thing about CMS is very rarely do our classes fail up, so you don't have to feel pressured to make a quick decision. Um, take your time and ask questions, you know, from your teachers, from us, your parents, um, and, you know, anybody, if you've researched the colleges you want to go to, do your homework so you make sure you're um, setting yourself up for the right path that is of interest to you. But you're going to go on to um, the Sapphire Community Portal. Many of you probably have this as an app on your iPad, but nonetheless, you can also go on any computer and Google the CASD uh, Sapphire Community Portal. And you're going to input your username and password. Um, user, username has been your lunch number, uh, the password you see there, it's either CASD or CMS. Um, and I don't set that. So if you have any questions with that, and you may have re reset it, um, Mrs. Holler, our secretary out front, she she does have access to um, any of your username and passwords if you do forget that information. Um, so then you're going to uh, see an announcement and you're gonna click where it says next year course request form. It's gonna be right up there. It is also on the left hand side. So if you miss it right in the middle of the screen where it says next year course request form is available, you can also find that step right on the left hand side of your Sapphire um, student portal. And when you click on it, it'll open up something similar, similar to this. You'll see English, fitness, gym, all that. It's in alphabetical order. And this is where you can select the classes um, and alternates as well. Specific, uh, you'll see where on each subject it says special request. 
uh, it should allow you to type in there what that special request is. So for instance, this would apply maybe more so to the 11th, 12th graders looking to do early to college classes. If you know you wanted to go to Mon Alto to take uh, a literature composition class, then you could click on special request and type in there you know, college class, Penn State English class. So we know that that's what your thought process was or, you know, where you're going with your thoughts. I personally am a fan of you selecting the classes we have. And if you get into those early to college classes, it's so easy to pull you out, but I don't want any one of us to miss the communication chain and not realize you selected an English class or a math class or whatever. So I mean, I encourage you, and Mrs. Fato, I think it's probably similar, select as if you're staying in the building, my upperclassmen. And if you go to early to college, not a big deal to remove you from the um, CMS courses along the way. This way, we just make sure you're staying on track to meet all your graduation needs. And then it'll list electives. Again, this is just a screenshot. This is not, uh, Mrs. Faital and myself have worked on um, correcting and updating the electives and they're always subject to change. Everything about scheduling is subject to change. Um, and so just because we currently are showing we offer it, sometimes uh, people move and job titles change and that could impact things. But by and large, what you see when you click, click on the sheet is what we're going to offer for the following year. And as I mentioned, you see the alternate over there. Um, that is where if you don't get this, then I want to have this as a backup. Like a lot of times psych and sociology, um, or it's, you'll see students pick alternate. If you like psych, you're probably gonna like sociology. So I encourage you to pick that as an alternate because psych is only taught one half of the year and social is only taught the other half of the year. So you might have some conflicts. So if you want one of them to count as a elective or a history credit, I encourage you to put them both, one as an alternate, one as the main choice. And that way you know you'll get something in that particular field. If it is read, it just means that there's a prerequisite. Like you can't take AP calc without taking pre-calc, all right? Those sort of things. Um, so it just, it should, um, you should be prevented from selecting that course unless you've taken the prerequisite. And you can select as many as you want and I encourage you to select alternates, just again, makes it easy for us to um, kind of fit things in if there's any conflicts along the way. And then you wanna make sure you see the green box at the bottom that you click on the save the course request. All right, so make sure you scroll the whole way down and you click on that and save your request. When you do, it should pop open a new tab that looks similar to this, where it'll list the English class and the math class, et cetera, that you have selected. Um, it'll show you the total number of credits you selected. So if you're not seeing anything from five or higher, I would probably say six or higher, but you know, five or higher would um, for our upperclassmen, then you need to maybe go back and look at what haven't you selected. Maybe you forgot to select a science credit or a math credit or enough elective credits. But, and I encourage you to save that. Um, and that way you have it to reference down the road if anything ever happens with technology and we can't find your course request, you have a copy and it's easy for you to go back in and, and reselect the courses. Our plan is to um, post everyone's course requests to their individual portals so that you can see this particular sheet and know what you selected. Um, and if there's anything that does conflict uh, and you have not selected an alternate, Mrs. Fatal and I work throughout um, you know, the end of the school year and often on throughout the summer and very early in the beginning of the school year before you guys come back to reach out and make sure that your schedule meets your needs and interests. All right. So that's it. Uh, once you actually make those choice selections and you get that sheet, um, then you're you finished and your requests are in and they'll be posted to the portal. If you go in and you like, you know, I thought about it. I don't want to take a certain class. You have until March 22nd to make changes on your end. However, if you know you decide after March 22nd, I don't think I want AP US history or I don't want sociology, you can then at that point email Mrs. Levitz or I and we can make the changes on our end, okay? So don't panic if you miss the 22nd, just know that after the 22nd, we would have to make the changes. So um, yeah, you're, we're, that's really all that you're gonna need to do. Um, but I think the big thing that we wanna emphasize is the communication that you're communicating with us and we will communicate with you 
um, if we're seeing issues on our end um, as well, like Mrs. Levitt said throughout the summer. So that's it. Um, it's hard to believe we're already at this point, but um, it's time to think about next school year and we're excited. We're hoping next school year is, we'll see you guys in person. So reach out if you need anything. Thank you. And check your Schoology, uh, Schoology announcements. That's where a lot of information is going to be shared with you on how to access these resources. And if you haven't yet joined the Remind app, reach out to Mrs. Fatal on how to like get connected because that's another great way for us to send information out for you. And that way we can guide you, hey, it's ready to schedule or hey, there's information about, you know, um, upcoming co-op experiences and things of that nature, scholarship opportunities. So if you're not part of the Remind app, reach out to Mrs. Fatal and we can get you connected for sure. Absolutely. We'll see you in your classes soon. Bye.